Hi, everybody. I love watching Jonathan Alvarez Brana. Hi, how are you? Um, Mike Jackson, 693. Hi, everybody. It's Tuesday, September 14th. Um, Jay Leslie, 83. Hi. Hi, Stephanie. Boom. Hello from Texas. Hi from Texas. Um, where's everybody else coming from? Hi from the Philippines. APBHMD. Hi. Michigan. Hi, Tiffany from Michigan. I love Michigan. One of my favorite places. Hi, Marty from Ireland. Wow. Uh, Joe. Hi. How are you doing? Laura Stone. Hi, Maria. Hi. How are you? Dan Butner. Oh, hi, Dan. That's my pal, Dan Butner, great Blue Zone creator, explorer, writer. Um, hi, Maria from Sacramento, Aquat Mott. Hi, how are you? Tampa, Florida, Melbourne, Australia. That's so exciting. Um, gosh, Wisconsin. Uh, Joey, my nephew, Joey. Hi, Aunt Maria. Hi, Joey. Oh, hi, Joey. He's the only one of my nieces and nephews that uh, watches. Hi, Joey. That's so sweet of you to join me. You're supposed to probably be doing homework, but I'm glad you're here. Hey, Wanda. Um, did I vote today, Desiree? Yes, I voted today. And I, that's why I wanted to come on a few minutes early. Uh, if you're in California and you have not voted, please go out and vote. Please go out and vote. Uh, it's so important. We have the right to vote. Uh, it's a big day here in California. I happen to vote no on this recall, and I feel really good about my vote. Uh, I know you don't often hear people talk about how they voted, but why not? Um, uh, hi from Sacramento, nice to see you, nice to see you. I had a great seven years in Sacramento, and um, uh, my hope is that uh, Governor Newsom will continue in Sacramento, and then in a year we'll have an election all over again. But we just spent, uh, you should vote, Joey said. I did vote, Joey. I voted uh, very proudly and very quickly. As soon as I got my ballot, I voted and i um, proud to have voted. Uh, so I'm hoping that this will be the last recall we see here in California. I think there needs to be a lot of revision to that. So I'm hoping, uh, hi, Kay Green said I voted for by mail, great. Um, so, you know, however you vote, whether you go in uh, I like to go in too because I like to say hi to all the poll workers um, and um, I like to encourage them. It's always an act of service when you meet people who are manning the polls, so I always want to thank them. But vote, vote, vote if you're here in California and uh, obviously you, your vote is your own uh, decision, but uh, I hope you will vote. Allison, yes, Mosh Life. Mosh is a uh, uh, the new company I'm doing with my son Patrick and we start shipping bars or we're going to kind of officially launch next Tuesday on World Alzheimer's Day because uh, our bar will also be donating money to women-based research. So I'm super excited about that. I'm becoming an entrepreneur at my age. Who would have thought? Not, definitely not me. It's definitely a young person's game. So uh, luckily I'm surrounded by a lot of really good young people. Uh, and I like having friends of all ages, all decades. Um, yes, yeah, somebody just said it's easy to sit out. Been to Agne, hi. Easy to sit out your uh, civic duty, but not a good idea because our democracy is fragile. We're seeing that around our country. Women's uh, rights are fragile. We're seeing that around our country. So I hope uh, those of you who join me here, those of you who read the Sunday paper, We'll do whatever you can to be involved in our country, however you see fit. So I'm super excited about this book. Uh, it's called Good Anxiety, Harnessing the Power of the Most Misunderstood Emotion. And Dr. Wendy Suzuki is the writer of this. I've worked with Dr. Suzuki in my work for women in Alzheimer's. She's attended several things that we've done. I'm a big fan of hers. She's a, a trailblazer, a groundbreaker. And um, I have anxiety. I, I never knew I had anxiety and then all of a sudden there it was. And so having it labeled as good anxiety, I think everybody I talk to has some form of anxiety. But what I like about this book is that it says it's good anxiety. And she talks about how we can um, 
harness it for good, how we can build resilience from it. I don't know where she is, but she's here. She's got to be. Well, she'll come, I guess. She'll come. I could, I could really rock your world and do an interview with my little nephew, Joey. <laughs> he's like 12 or 13, and he's supposed to be doing his homework, but I see him on here. But I don't know where he is. So, um, Marlon20032, hi, Maria from Brentwood. Okay, hi. How are we? Wendy Suzuki, I'm here. Well, Wendy, where are you? Um, Wendy, you have to view, uh, you have to request to come on. So maybe uh, you could do that, Wendy. Pretty please. Wendy, 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 Wendy Suzuki. Anyway, this book is already a bestseller. It's called Good Anxiety. And it's going to, we're gonna uh, put this conversation up in, um, up in the Sunday paper. And if you don't subscribe to the Sunday paper, I really hope you will subscribe to it. It's free. Uh, it's the most inspiring, informative newsletter on the web. And um, it's a great community, great group of people who get it. So I hope you will join us, but I don't know where Wendy is. So Wendy just requested. Okay, Wendy, let's just see if you really did. Nope. Wendy, she said, I just requested. So I'm gonna just request you myself. How about that? Wendy, um, Wendy Suzuki, I'm gonna request you myself. That works. Somebody else is saying, I have uh, anxiety too. Like who, who doesn't have anxiety? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you don't have anxiety. There you are. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I've been here listening to all your hellos. And like, I'm here. I'm here. You're, you're the neuroscientist. You're the one that's supposed to be able to send the request. But anyway, I feel like my brain is working thanks to you over the years. Congratulations, Wendy, Dr. Suzuki, on this book. Uh, it's really a triumph. I, I applaud you for it. And I love Thank the you. title, Wendy. Yeah. Good anxiety, because we're, we're taught, we're taught anxiety is bad. We're overcome with anxiety. Everybody has anxiety. Why is yeah. anxiety good? Put it in perspective for us. So anxiety is good because evolutionarily, anxiety and that underlying physiological stress response that comes with it, that that butterflies in your stomach and, and that queasy feeling, that evolved to actually protect us. It is protective, it is essential for our survival. And I know everybody out there is thinking, I'm not feeling protected by my anxiety right now, right? right. It is not protecting me. And the reason for that is that collectively as kind of a global uh, society, our anxiety levels have been churned up so much by the pandemic, by your election in California, this uncertain thing, you know, we're, we're anxious about that. We're all anxious about that. And too much of anything, even a good thing is bad. And so we have turned the dial up on anxiety too much and we've lost that protective aspect. So this book is getting us back to that protective good anxiety. So that's why I called it, I named it good anxiety. I love what you say here. You say anxiety is a psychological and physical response to stress. Then you go yeah. on to say the body does not know the difference between mm. stress caused by real factors and stress generated from imagined or hypothetical situations. So yeah. do you think that everybody is, not everybody, but so many of us are sitting around going, what if, what if this happened? Mm -hmm. what if, and we're causing ourselves unneeded, unnecessary yes. anxiety. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's, that's true. And let me just go back. You said maybe not everybody. Did you know that I finished the first draft of this book before the pandemic? And I started the book and I focused on my studies of anxiety because I noticed how many of my students at NYU were getting more anxious, my colleagues, my friends, myself. And when I looked at the stats at that time, before the pandemic, do you know that 90% of Americans identified as feeling feelings of anxiety? And of course now anxiety levels have gone up even more. So I think it's safe to say that all of us experience anxiety these days, which is just that feeling of fear and worry associated with uncertain situations. So what do you so, recommend, uh, Dr. Suzuki? So if somebody's sitting there and, you know, they're a mom and they feel anxious, they have yeah. a kid 
who's right. exhibiting anxiety, what are the first things we can do to lower the anxiety in our homes, yeah. in our bodies? What are the most right. effective steps we can take starting tonight? Yeah, so here are two that we can do right now, and maybe we can just do this together. The first one is to activate part of our stress reduction nervous system. I don't know if you knew that there was a part of the nervous system that is specialized in reducing our stress. It's called the parasympathetic nervous system, and it works to decrease our heart rate, decrease our respiration weight, and it pushes blood from our muscles into our digestive and reproductive systems. It's called, also called the rest and digest part of our nervous system. And so the best way to activate that is to stimulate the part of it that we have conscious control over, which is our breath. So I'm going to invite everybody just right now, we're going to do a four-part breath work together, just one round, just right. to see how it makes you feel. We're going to count four, in, uh, four counts inhale, four counts at the top, four counts exhaling, four counts at the bottom. And just join me right now for a big, deep inhale. Three, two, one. Hold at the top. Three, two, one. Deep exhale, three, two, one. Hold at the bottom, three, two, one. Just leading that every time I do it makes me slow down, really kind of calms the nerve. And now the nerves, now you know why. We are activating part of our nervous system with this approach. And also, that, isn't it, so how also, because we've i've read a lot obviously about anxiety I have four kids and um yes. and then i i said i myself have struggled with anxiety so kind of recognizing anxiety in boys or partners uh grown men yes. is very different than how women exhibit mm. what's the big difference how can you help a mom who might be at home now and she thinks oh my son doesn't have anxiety but in fact maybe her son does yeah yeah you know i think that um Part of the book is um, <clears throat> an invitation to look inside and and try and 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 ask yourself, you know, what are these feelings? Are they feelings of anxiety? And then um, really to slow down. If you do that and you start talking about that in yourself, I think you model that for your kids rather than, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Let's just go forward, go forward, which so many of us do as kind of part of our our life strategy. But I think it's really important to take a moment, step back, do the little breath work. If that really calmed your nerves, you might ask yourself, well, maybe that means that my nerves were, you know, really kind of ragged to, to begin with. And I really needed that deep breath work. Um, doing that is, is very helpful. And, and talking through these feelings, I think we also tend to ignore um, our uncomfortable feelings. Who wants to talk about their anger or their worry? Well, I think this book is an invitation to open up that conversation. I'm not saying with the rest of the world, with your boss, but with yourself and with, with friends to start talking about these um, range, this, this kind of uh, one side of the range of our emotions, which really make us human. They teach us things about ourselves. And I think that is why you want it to be your friend. What has anxiety taught you about yourself? Yes. So anxiety, um, so this is the this is the thing that I, I was most surprised about as I wrote this book. I found myself making friends with my own anxiety. And um, what? how did I make friends with it? Well, let me talk about the part of anxiety that I've had for the longest time, which is social anxiety. I was a very shy, awkward student growing up. I had a hard time, you know, interacting with, with friends. And, and mainly, I remember really wanting to interact in class and ask questions, but just being afraid. And I think that that part of my anxiety um, gave me many different things. Uh, it taught me that even though um, I'm afraid, I've of course developed strategies to get over that. And those were some of the most powerful strategies because I've learned that I'm not a hermit. I love interacting with people, even though I had that early social anxiety. We are social animals and, and kind of, um, acknowledging that and allowing myself to to be a little bit awkward and 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 try different things to um kind of enhance my social skills and and my social network 
has really, um, has really changed my life. And it also gave me a superpower in teaching because as a teacher now, right. I automatically kind of gravitate towards those students that I know are afraid in class to ask me questions. And I make sure that there's, there's lots of opportunities to ask. So it's also giving me a superpower of empathy. I love in the class. that. I love that because looking at your anxiety first and foremost as being your friend, being yeah. good, the words we use are so important. The words we use to ourselves about ourselves, yes. the words we use to ourselves about our fear, our anxiety, um, you're talking about it as a superpower. You're talking about it as having built empathy. It builds resilience. You talk right. about in the book about exercising your way to calm. I know you've done a lot about that. Hacking your yes. sleep, uh, modifying solutions, celebrating uh, your wins. You call this the good anxiety toolbox. So mm -hmm. kind of toolbox to quiet uh, your yes. anxiety. Is it something that like people could find like, okay, I now have tools to quell my anxiety, to quiet it, but to also look at your anxiety as a superpower. Yes, yes. So, I mean, it's, it's a sequence. So step one is to first say, okay, Wendy says anxiety is supposed to be good. Okay, let, let me try and explore that. Let me turn down the anxiety. Let me go to those last chapters of the book and look at that toolbox. And I tried to give so many. So everybody with all kinds of tastes, what they like, what they don't like, they can find something to try and tune, turn down the volume of their anxiety. And when that is turned down, then you get into that zone where anxiety starts to be protective because you can start to look in t inward onto those emotions and learn what that is teaching you about yourself. And at that point, that's when you can start to benefit from some of these gifts of anxiety, uh, from empathy. So it's hard to be empathetic when you are, you know, racked with anxiety. So let's turn that volume down. Let us um, explore our own anxiety and, and ask ourselves, what, how can I help somebody else from my experience of anxiety, for example. Yeah, I love what you also, you talk about practicing um, optimism. You talk yeah. about positive self-tweeting. I, I like yeah. that, I'm a big believer in that. Uh, you talk about creating new microflow moments. You talk about writing. Uh, I find that very helpful to expressive, mm -hmm. to use your body in a way to use the expression of, of actually handwriting out this is how I'm feeling. And then sometimes you might discover that what you thought was anxiety might be excitement, might be nerves about yeah. a speech, and that's not necessarily yeah. bad, just means you're awake and aware, right? Right, right, and, exactly. And you know, I love this thing because I saw this piece, my cousin sent it to me about uh, the six exercises you do every day to build mental strength. And you, you talk about visualizing positive outcomes. Most of us mm -hmm. visualize negative outcomes. Yes. This is what, why is it so important to visualize positive outcomes even when the world feels like it's so unstable? Yeah, um, it is because you cr we create our worlds in our brains and those visualizations become um, the model for what we, you know, expect in the world. It's kind of like having a wonderful role model in your life. This can happen. Look at this amazing person who uh, is an entrepreneur later in life, as you were just saying, who does all these, you know, amazing interviews. You want that kind of model to inspire yourself. And also, you know, a lot of this book is about using your own creativity to change your mindset, to change the way you are looking at these situations that for so long have just been, oh, this is just the anxiety and then, you know, I don't like Give this. Give an and example there, Wendy, about using your creative mind to change yeah. something that might have, that you might be dealing with every day that's negative. Yeah. So, you know, let me use an example from my life. I could name uh, the anxiety provoking people in my life. There's, there's always some people that, that will uh, provoke anxiety. And some of these, you know, anxiety provoking situations or people, I've had this, this history for a long, long, long time. It's like, I can't change history. Well, can we use our, can I use my creativity to think about a different way to approach it? Maybe 
starting the conversation in a different way, maybe putting it in a different context to try and alleviate these, these points of conflict that we know so well. Everybody has these, these but, but it's hard to come up with other ways to, do, to kind of approach it. So that is where I um, really encourage people to use their creativity and, and think about lots of different ways that you can have a conversation, shift the, uh, shift the energy in that conversation, and that way change the, um, the anxiety triggers that are triggering you. And finally, kind of the other side of not seeing anxiety as good as not taking a hold of it and trying to be creative and positive about it. It's really yeah. bad for your health, correct? Yes, and, absolutely. And so if we don't start to try to practice good anxiety, if we don't right. adopt a toolbox, if we don't use our creativity, if we don't do some of these suggestions, I think yeah. what Wendy is really kind of fundamentally saying is that this can really negatively impact our brains, our bodies, right. our relationships. So it behooves us uh, yes. to start renaming this thing that is this quote monster, right? Renaming and mm -hmm. re kind of envisioning our capacity to tame it. Yes, exactly, exactly. Stress, um, stress in short bursts is protective. It can help us, but we know from many, many years of research that long-term stress that comes with long-term and constant anxiety that so many of us are, are feeling these days can not only damage you know, major uh, physiological systems, your heart, your digestive system, your reproductive system gets thrown out of whack with long-term stress and anxiety, but it can kill brain cells. It can damage certain parts of your brain, particularly those parts of the brain that are already sensitive to aging. I'm talking about the hippocampus, critical for long-term memory, the prefrontal cortex, critical for, for decision-making and uh, focus and attention. So we want to, um, uh, we want to take down our overall level of anxiety so that we can preserve these brain areas for as long as possible and have strong cognitive power as we go into our older years. Thank you so much, Dr. Wendy Suzuki. The book is called Good Anxiety, Harnessing the Power of the Most Misunderstood Emotion. So what this book is, is got tools in it, but it's also a health book. It really yes. is because your health is in your hands, right? And right. so how Absolutely. you manage the what ifs, right? Mm -hmm. Will determine in many ways your brain health, your emotional health, your spiritual health. And this Absolutely. is a manual for how to take control. It's fun, uh, it's creative, and it's positive. It's uplifting and it's optimistic. And I think that's why it's doing so well and it's also steeped in research, which is uh, your jam. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> that is my jam. That's your jam. And uh, I've known Wendy uh, for many years. As I said before we got on, we worked together with the Women's Alzheimer's mm -hmm. Movement. We worked together on summits. Uh, she's as good as they get. Uh, she's as knowledgeable as they come. And she has put that knowledge, those years of research, those years and decades of work into a manual and a manifesto that will benefit mm -hmm. us all. So Dr. Wendy Suzuki, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank Good you, Maria. I really you, appreciate with it. With the book. God bless you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I just want thank to begin you. again. Bye. Bye. Yeah. That is such a great book, and there's great blurbs on the back of this uh, from Dr. Daniel Amen, Eve Rotsky, uh, Lisa Bellew, Sharon Salzberg, all of them uh, blurbing this book, um, 40 Strategies for Making Anxiety Work for You. So I think uh, we're all living in anxious times, and we, can all, we all have the power to kind of take it down. Uh, the book title appears backwards, Maria, says Tom Baker Law. Thank you, Tom Baker Law. It says good anxiety. Okay, I don't know how to make it go straight, but I can just tell you it says good anxiety, um, harnessing the power of the most misunderstood emotion. And um, it's a bright red colored book, and uh, you can get it anywhere at your local bookstores, your independent bookstores. And of course, you can get it, um, you know, where on Amazon. So 
Um, but also I think it's really good. I wish this book had been around when I had little kids because uh, we can pass down anxiety in, um, in our families. And so it's really uh, important for all of us to do what we can uh, to manage our own anxiety in the workplace, at home, and certainly on Twitter. There's a lot of anxiety on Twitter. Uh, so I think we're all lights. We can all be the change we want to be. We can all be the people that bring it down and uh, practice optimism in our social media feeds and in our daily interactions. Um, somebody, j Dog says, I have a book about how I live with autism and I'm in the Special Olympics. Awesome. I love that. Uh, good for you. A book on autism written by somebody in Special Olympics. My mother is smiling down from heaven. Um, so thank you all. Uh, Paulo says, yes, Twitter is full of anxiety. Um, yeah, it is. But we don't have to add to that. We can actually make our Twitter feeds, our social media feeds, we can look at them as our own networks, as extensions of ourselves, and make them positive, make them calming, make them filled with information that actually helps people. Uh, that's certainly um, what we're trying to do here uh, in um, our office at Schreiber Media. It's what we try to do every week with the Sunday paper. And um, I thank all of you for joining our community. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the Sunday paper uh, every Sunday, right in your inbox. And uh, I really appreciate it. Um, thank you, Wanda. Um, tell you right to Peace Corps week next week. Wow, that's amazing. If there are any other Peace Corps uh, volunteers out there, God bless you. Somebody said, I met you with Mother Dolores. Uh, what an incredible uh, nun Mother Dolores is. At, um, yeah, she's incredible at her convent, Mother Dolores. Okay, thank you all so much, and I'll see you back here real soon. Bye-bye.